Hi folks, this is all the fruit and today I want to show you a couple more fruit you can forage in Germany in March. Well, because of the Corona lockdown I'm doing the video indoors, but fortunately because of my job I can be outdoors most of the time and also collect some fruit while I'm outdoors. Well, March is basically more or less the worst time to forage for fruit in temperate climates like Germany. The stuff from last year, well, yeah, November, December are still full of fruit, despite being very cold and usually very wet months. January, February, you can still find some fruit from last year, but March, April... It's a very tough time. If it's a very mild spring, you can have strawberries and cherries and such stuff by the end of April. But March, yeah, I would say February and March are the worst times for foraging for fruit. March is actually quite a good time for foraging for stuff. You can basically forage for edible leaves and flowers and you can still find a lot of edible roots and bulbs and tubers. Basically, you can forage a combination of both, but... Fruits are hard in March, <clears throat> but this is a channel about fruit, so we forage for fruit. Doesn't mean that I don't forage for other stuff, I do, but I'm not showing it here. Well, when, well, basically yeah, March is the worst month to forage for fruit in Germany. Exceptions are very mild or very harsh winters. A very harsh winter will preserve a lot of fruit. If you get a lot of, if you get harsh frost or snow in autumn, let's say in November, and have snow covering the ground or basically permanent frost or a mixture of frost and very dry weather, uh, the fruit, uh, a lot of the fruit will be preserved. If you have uh, everything covered with snow, it will basically be like a freezer. <clears throat> if you have a mixture of very cold and dry uh, weather, basically everything will be shocked, dried, freeze dried on the stem. Uh, in a very mild winter, well, the fruit will not freeze, so the cells will not explode, so they will survive for many months during the winter and also a lot of the plants will survive and being able to continue nourishing the fruit and even producing new fruit. Well, this winter, the last winter was basically on the mildish side, not as mild as the winter before. So the, uh, now we have the end of March, we have the 29th of March uh, 2020. So the winter 2019-2020 was pretty mild in Germany, at least in my part of Germany, in Heidelberg, but not as mild as the winter 2018-2019. So pretty mild, but not too mild. Still not the worst winter for fruit, but not as perfect as last winter. We don't have the gigantic amounts of fruit we had last March on the plants. Well, last winter was also following a very dry summer, so a lot of the fruit were very dry, and if something doesn't have a lot of moisture, it's not so easy for it to rot. But let's see what we got now in March. Well, what shall we start with? The fire thorn, Puracanta coccinea. Here in Europe it's an ornamental, but I read that in America it's actually quite a normal plant for stuff like um, jam and things that fire thorn jam seems to be quite popular in the United States. And look at those little fruit here. They still look perfectly edible. A couple of them are a little bit shiveled up and brownish. But yeah, if you are picky, you can pick the, the ones which look almost perfect like this one. Slightly sour and starchy, nothing special, but hey, it's March. If you want to forage for fruit, you can Google what you can make from fire thorn and maybe forage it. <clears throat> oh, this was Berberis. Ooh, what was this? Berberis Juliane, Berberis Piali. Oh my God. I forgot the name of this Berberis. I'm sure I knew it half an hour ago. I definitely knew it when I picked the plant. 
Oh, wait. Well, it's a berberis and not a mahonia because it has no leaflets, but the leaves are of one piece. Oh God, what is it? Well, maybe it's berberis beali. I'm not sure, folks, but definitely, well, already getting new fruit. It still has the fruit from last year. Well, yeah, quite dry but sour. A lot of people say that many Berberi species are toxic. So folks, before you eat some Berberi species, check online. Don't trust my videos on this. Well, here in Mahonia, Mahonia Equifolium, the Oregon grape. Well, um, at least North Americans shall be should be quite uh, familiar with it. It's being used as a wild fruit in parts of North America. That's why it got this name, Oregon grape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, a little bit dry. Look, they all shiveled up a little bit, but yeah, tastes like Oregon grape. Basically like a low quality grape, but with this one there are also some restrictions. Some say that you shouldn't eat it raw. Okay, let's try and sort out this stuff. Well, here are the star of the video. All those fruit, they are normally from last autumn and in, only in very few occasions do you get fruit which are ripe in spring. But this here, the silver berry, Eliagnus ebingei or ebingi, ebingi, is the first, is the fruit, the, the real fruit shrub or tree, which is the earliest to ripen in Germany. But funny enough, the fruit looked like this in the first days of January when I made the video about this very same plant. Then I came back, yeah. Almost three months later, about 12 weeks later, and the fruit are still in the same state. But the plant was pruned severely in meanwhile. So maybe this is some sort of second generation fruit because I don't think a fruit which is adapted to ripening in winter and spring will stay at exactly the same stage for 12 weeks. You can check out my video on silverberry in January 2020 and you can basically confirm that the things look like this. So I guess this is a second generation after the first generation already ripened and got eaten by the birds. Well, the Gustrum vulgare, very common ornamental, very popular for hedges in Germany and in other parts of Europe, but you are not supposed to eat it. It's supposed to be toxic. I think I'll make a dedicated video once I have time for the Gustrum vulgare. Um, yeah, you can find the fruit basically in most months of the year. I think birds eat them and that's how the plant is being spread, but the humans are not supposed to eat them. But, but as I said, I'll try to do a video on ligustrum. Well, pine cones. While there are some toxic conifers, I think everything from the family uh, Pinaceae, uh, everything from the pine family, as far as I know, has edible fruit. Definitely all pine species have edible fruit. Only most of them have fruit which are so small that, um, well, have seeds which are so small that they are not worth foraging for. Here I have two cones from Pinus nigra. Well, here is a, an abortive seed. Hmm. Okay, nothing inside this one. Ah, here there seems to be a good seat. Come on, come out. No, the seat is not good. Well, here we have two unpollinated or abortive seeds. Here we have two wings from those seeds. So, yeah, this time Pinus nigra doesn't even have small edible seeds or maybe or maybe they all got eaten by squirrels. Wait, this one. Ah, here is a good one. <coughs> and another one. As you can see, the seeds are tiny. Only a couple millimeters. Wait. That's the size of a seed, like three millimeters long. Not much taste. 
Well, the most important, the, the most commercially important uh, pine species for its seeds is the domestic pine or the Mediterranean pine. It's um, not rare in the area of Heidelberg nowadays. It was very rare 20 years ago, but with climate change in the European common market, we got a lot of them from the Mediterranean. And as you can see here, there are some big holes or grooves in most of those scales. So they were, there were big, big pine nuts inside. However, I've never find, I've never found edible seeds inside those pine nuts. Like look here. In this, in this scale, there is a big hole. There was a big, pine nut which is actually a seed like one and a half centimeters long and really thick which fell out so basically this species is the best european pine species for foraging stuff like the bunya bunya pine from australia is also can also be found in southern europe but pretty rare but this stuff you can find everywhere and they're actually big commercial enterprises for harvesting and selling it but as i said in germany it grows it produces the nuts but they've never found Edible seeds inside. Mm, what have we got here? Well, the apples. Here we have ornamental apples. This is something like um, Malus. Yeah, something from the Malus Pacata group. So not European uh, apples, but apples related to the Asian Asian group of apples, like stuff related to Fuji apples. And if you look at those, I collected them from three different plants. This one even looks like a teeny tiny Fuji apple, this with those uh, faint reddish, with this faint reddish pattern on the on yellow ground. Well, basically I, I collected them from three different trees. This one has pure yellow fruit. This one has pure red fruit. They're all turning brown now because of the warm spring. And this one has those uh, those yellow fruit with an orange or red pattern. Yeah, basically pretty much selections of all of the same species or group of species. All pretty much cherry size. I couldn't find the teeny tiny pea sized ones. They are not as common as the cherry sized ones. And I didn't find a single tree which had fruit this March. But those are perfectly edible. Look. Yeah. Tastes like a low quality, pretty dry apple. But if you want to forage for fruit in March, you cannot do much better than little cherry sized apples. At least not in Germany. Well, this is no apple but the flowering quince or Japanese quince. Last year, their fruit were everywhere in March, even still preserved on the shrubs in quite large amounts. You could harvest them by the kilogram. This time I had to walk by like 50 meters of ornamental quince hatch before I could find one single well-preserved fruit. Well, it tells me that the winter was probably a little bit more harsh and the summer probably a little bit less hot. So, the roses, I already put them in my last video, but there I had only some very bad quality rotten stuff of the canine group. These were the roses which are commonly known as Rosa canina. In this case, I collected a couple from the canine group which, are, which seem to be quite intact. Let's try them. The important thing is not to eat the seeds because the seeds are surrounded by itching powder. The itching powder is basically like little cactus spines but inside the fruit. Mmm. Nice and tasty. Like rose jam, like um, rose hip jam without sugar. In Eastern Europe, rose hip jam is quite a common thing and this tastes like rose hip jam without sugar. Well, let's try them. This was quite a dry fruit from this plant. Here I have some which are more plump and moist. Oh yeah, see here the flesh is still more liquid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
tastes more fresh. And here we have the seeds surrounded by those little spiny hairs, which are the itching powder. Well, those were the roses. Well, we already had this Mahonia. Well, here I have um, a Rumex. A Ru uh, this is some pretty early Rumex Optuzifolius. I don't actually know if the fruit are edible. The leaves of many Rumex species are a popular vegetable, a spinach or salad. Like the sorrel is a Rumex species. Uh, but I don't know about the fruit. I mean, um, sorrel is quite closely related to buckwheat, and buckwheat is a grain. So I guess maybe in an emergency situation you could eat fruit of sorrel or other rumex species, but I'm not sure. Another fruit I'm not sure about is the, is the uh, locust tree or Robinia pseudacacia. The flowers are very tasty and I like to forage them in, uh, in every spring. And I know that they are being foraged in America where this tree is from. It's from the United States and I think parts of Canada. They're also being foraged in Asia, usually by children because they are quite sweet. So the flowers are a very popular wild food, even with townspeople in some areas. I don't know about the fruit. Well, they are from the bean family, as you can see. The pots are already too dried up to be of any use, but maybe somebody can tell me if the seeds can be used as little beans or peas here. Those seeds are all abortive after two years of drought stress. But maybe in some of the other pots I'll find good seeds. No. Well, basically, folks, tell me if a locust uh, tree seeds are edible. Well, here another ornamental apple, but all of the apples already... Oh no, they are not fallen off. Not all trees have well-preserved fruit. This one had only rotten fruit. An ornamental apple with nice flowers, but only rotten fruit. Here another Rumex. Well, this here is some impatient species. I don't even know the English name. Impatients, the, well, they're from the mustard family. They taste like mustard, very tasty. You can basically eat the uh, eat the young leaves. You can eat the flowers and the young stems. Let's see how good the fruit are. Mm. A little bit tough already. Those fruit are not as young as I would like them to be. Maybe those here are younger. But yeah, tastes like mustard. So, I think I covered already over half of the fruit, but in order not to make the video too long, I will uh, finish now and start another video. So folks, don't run away, there is the second part with a few of the culturally most significant fruit you can forage in March. Okay, stay tuned for the second part of the video, and don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.